I seem to be able to make a certain amount of money, but I'm never able to make more. Or my business isn't able to scale in the way I want to scale it. Or when I'm dealing with customers or clients, I have a problem closing deals with them. You know, you're a great performer, but I think your communication skills are off the charts. Could I hire you to come to MIT and train some of our grad students to improve their communication? I don't know how to teach anyone to be talented. I don't know if anyone can do that. It's just technique. And this is great news because technique is transferable. I think everything worth having in this life begins with communication. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I am your host, Nikki Ballou. And this is another one of our incredible emerging thought leader series of podcast episodes where we interview an emerging thought leader in the space. And today's guest is a very interesting man. I'm super excited to have him here. And I know you're going to be too. Today's guest is the one and only, the legendary Larry Wilson. Welcome to the show, Larry. Thank you very much. I'm very flattered to be one of the emerging thought leaders. It's very nice. God bless your heart. Thanks for being on the show. So, uh, Larry, our first question is a simple one. Tell us your backstory. How'd you get to be the great Larry Wilson? People want to know your story. (laughs) Well, when you put it like that, it it sounds much more dramatic than it really is. Um, I'm I'm an Emmy-nominated, award-winning comedy magician the short form version is to say i've never had a real job nikki i've been doing this my entire life and in 2017 i was named comedy magician of the year i've been lauded with all these awards i mean it's all very very flattering but during the course of my career traveling all over the world working with the very biggest superstars in entertainment I began to see that they all had one thing in common. It was the way they communicated. And some of them were very conscious of what they were doing. Uh, I could say to them afterwards, I'd say, I just saw you in this conversation. How did you do that? And they'd break it down. Others were totally working on instinct. They didn't know what they were doing. So I could sort of model them and try to figure it out for myself. But um, a few years back, Uh, the Ford professor of engineering at MIT, Alan Oppenheim, saw me speaking someplace and came up to me afterwards and said, you know, you're a great performer, but I think your communication skills are off the charts. He said, could I hire you to come to MIT and train some of our grad students to improve their communication? I said, of course. Now, I've been doing this one-on-one for years with people in show business, but never with normal, real people. And (laughs) it was an eye-opening experience for me. The grad students at MIT were incredible. Of course, they were all geniuses. They just didn't have good communication skills. And of course, the thing it reminds me of, I saw last year an interview with uh, Warren Buffett, where some interviewer was saying, "Uh, what advice can you give young entrepreneurs? And he said, oh, I can tell you something right now that can increase your value by at least 50%. And when I was watching this, I was like, really? I want to know what that is. He said, improve your communication skills, both written and verbal. He said, it doesn't matter how brilliant you are. If you can't transmit those ideas, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens. I, I felt the same way you did. I thought that was so charming. That made me laugh. So, but of course, his he's right. So, I did this uh, weekend training at uh, MIT, and afterwards, Professor Oppenheim said to me, he "said You know, you're a great performer, but I think this is what you were meant to do." And I said, "Really?" And he said, "Yeah." So, with his encouragement, I developed this program I call Wilson Method. And there are a couple of hallmarks, I think, of Wilson Method. One is it's not based on talent. 
I don't know how to teach anyone to be talented. I don't know if anyone can do that. It's just technique. And this is great news because technique is transferable. Technique is duplicatable, you know? It's like, how do you bake a cake? How do you hit a tennis serve? How do you uh, fillet a fish? You know, all these different things that are technique-based, the more you do them, the better you get at them. And that's really the basis of all of Wilson technique. They're all simple things anyone can do. But they work, to use an old-fashioned expression, like gangbusters. They have a really profound effect on the quality of your life, whether it's uh, personal or professional. Uh, there are some people who've come to me with one avenue in mind and find they benefit in the other as well. So um, that's really, I think, the whole Larry Wilson story, I think. I really, really, really like it, brother, because you not only told the story, you actually answered my next question, which is, what's the problem that you solve for your clients, <laughs> right? <laughs> you just went right into answering that as well. But add to that. So clients come to you and they realize they have an itch they want to scratch, right? And the itch they want to scratch is, I'm not a good communicator. Therefore, I'm not getting my ideas across powerfully. So I'm not making as much money as I could be. I'm not advancing my career as much as I could be. I'm not getting the girl to go out with me or the guy to go out with me or whatever it is, right? Well, it's interesting because uh, you put your finger right on it. But there's something even more subtle, I think. You know, you said, oh, people realize this is my problem. A lot of times they don't know what the problem is. They identify those things you just said. Um, I seem to be able to make a certain amount of money, but I'm never able to make more. Or my business isn't able to scale in the way I want to scale it. Or when I'm dealing with customers or clients, I have a problem closing deals with them. Or like you said, in personal, my family life, there's tremendous trouble there. They don't always recognize that it's communication. Now, obviously, I have a bias, Nikki. I think everything worth having in this life begins with communication. You know, it's interesting that you say that, but um, there is a coach that I had who was actually a client of mine back when I was a fitness coach. And she taught a program at an organization called Landmark Worldwide. At the time, they were called Landmark Education. Their precursor organization was called EST. You may have heard of EST being in Hollywood. Oh, sure, of course. And Earhart Seminars Training. And she taught the communications course in there. And one of the things she said to me is, everything you want in life is possible out of communication. And well, I, she's a genius. She's a genius. She's a genius. So I mean, she's right. She. It's as simple as that. It. It seems too easy to be true, but like so many things in this life, it really is easy. I, I have to tell you, I'm always suspect when someone presents something to me that's a solution to a problem, but it's really complicated. It's really Byzantine and difficult to understand. That sets off an alarm bell in my head because my life experience has been that the great secrets are always simple. They're always easy to do if you have someone to point you in the right direction. Now, Larry... You've already started to answer this question. It's uncanny how you do this <laughs> with your answers. But you figure out what you're meant to do in the world through the help of this gentleman at MIT. And I want to know, what does your soul tell you is the dent you're meant to make in the universe? Wow. Well, that's... that's uh... You don't ask the softball questions, do you, Nikki? Well, I'll tell you, 
it's complicated. You know, sometimes in a Wilson method, um, I'll talk about uh, the difference between micro or macro. You know, when you get up very close to things, they look one way. When you get very far back, you have a different perspective. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other or more truthful. It just means they're different perspectives. So at a certain level, when you say, what is the dent I want to make in this world? I... I personally derive enormous satisfaction from passing uh, essentially what is my life's work on to people who are serious about making their lives better. Everything Wilson Method is really is the accumulation of things I've learned over almost 40 years in show business. And... I myself didn't really appreciate how powerful it was because all the things were so simple. But I've worked with some very high-powered people, people who've won uh, Academy Awards, actually some of whom won multiple Academy Awards. And the things I learned from them were uh, simply extraordinary. They are just extraordinary. And it's... It never uh, fails to amaze me how much I get out of training other people. Right now, I'm I'm finally, uh, COVID sort of motivated me to work with my IT guy to put together an online training course for Wilson Method that we're just about to roll out. Uh, in the past, I had always done live events. I, I'll do a um, two-day boot camp that really is a boot camp, unlike, uh, it's not a seminar, it's not me standing talking to you. I'm teaching stuff and then making you get up and do it because I want you to really experience it and have that imprinted on your unconscious, the feeling of what it's like to actually do it. And I limit those uh, boot camps to just 10 people because it's very intensive. It's two very intensive days but really fun, exciting, stimulating, and productive days. So I kept seeing every time I would do this, I felt I was getting as much or more than anyone I was training. So that's one level of the dent. But if I were to drill down even further, Nikki, I have a son who I have a wife and a son and I love them both dearly. But this son is, I don't know, he's, I, you know, I'm crazy about him. He's fantastic. Never been a lick of trouble in his entire life. He's just been incredible. Now, of course, I never really talk about Wilson Method stuff around the family, but he was very observant. I remember when he was like nine, I was someplace at some party and he was there Somebody came up to me and said, I just met your son. I said, oh, yeah. They said, he shook my hand and he looked me in the eye when he was talking to me. I said, well, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do when you talk to me. He goes, yeah, but I don't know any other nine-year-olds who do that. I said, well, I guess he's seen me doing it. I, I never talked to him about it, but he must have seen it. Right? Anyway, I love this boy. And if you really ask me what dent I wanted to make in the world, I feel like the better people can communicate, the more wonderful a world it will be for my son to grow up in. And if I had a totally selfish motive, it was just that I feel like everything I can do to make his life more wonderful that's my goal. And I don't think of it as about money or using my connections to, I want him to have authentic experiences of his own. But it's funny, Nikki, I think a million years ago, I was doing a show in um, someplace in Michigan. Oh, in Flint, Michigan. Mm. And I was there, it was like three nights or something. And after the first night, I was someplace in town and I went in someplace to 
get something to eat or I was in line or something. And I just remember I was feeling irritable and somebody in front of me couldn't get their order right. And I was just thinking, these people are idiots. And then somebody in front of me turned around and said, hey, you're that guy, Larry Wilson. And I was like, uh, yeah. They said, oh, we saw you last night. We thought you're fantastic. And of course, my feelings about them changed instantly. And I remember at the time thinking, oh, this is what this is all about. It's about making friends with everyone in the world. So wherever I go, I have friends. Now, I realize that's a little simplistic and perhaps idealistic. But when I think every time I'm training someone, um, I do one-on-one -on -one consults, um, but it's, of course, much more expensive for my clients. Uh, I have one later today, almost immediately when you and I are finished here. Yes. And this woman I'm working as a high-powered executive in uh, finance. And every time I work with her, I feel so great afterwards because she's serious and really applies herself. And I can see her making leaps and bounds in progress. When you say what kind of dent I want to make, I guess I feel like I'm making things better just a little bit at a time. You know, the genius of having a genius level communicator on my podcast is that I don't need to say much and I can just let you talk. And my listener is riveted to what you're saying because you're an excellent communicator and you're modeling for them what excellence in communication looks like or sounds like, to be precise. So I'm really grateful from that point of view. Um, so I consider myself to be a master communicator, but I'm not at your level, not even close, right? Uh, it, I it, have to say, I think you're very good, Nikki, though. I think you're very I good. I appreciate that. I am very good, but I'm looking at you going, I want to be better. I don't want to just be very good. I don't want to be an icon. <laughs> I don't want to be one of the best that ever lived, you know, because I pride myself. There are a few things I, I pride myself on. One of them is my ability to speak and my ability to write. I've actually published nine books right now. And oh. um, it's, it's important to me. When I was a young boy, my dream was to be a published writer. And all of my books so far have been self-published. Now I'm writing a 10th book. It's a collaboration. A few of my books have been collaborations. And I'm writing this book with a man named uh, Lieutenant Colonel, retired U.S. Army, David Grossman. Now, Colonel Grossman was in the U.S. Army Rangers, and he wrote a book in the 90s that became very famous in certain circles. He became a real thought leader when it came to subjects of killing people in combat. And he wrote a book called On Killing, you know, macabre title. And it was a study of the impact of soldiers and law enforcement officials of being forced to kill people what that did to them. Hmm. Now, this book, there was nothing like it at the time. It sold a million copies. Now, remember, hmm. this is a, a, a niche book, right? But it made David Grossman a world-renowned thought leader. And then he wrote the book On Combat. And then he's a devout Christian, so he wrote On Spiritual Combat. And now he wrote On Hunting. And so now I'm about to have possibly my first non-self-published book with Colonel Grossman because he's oh, got a publisher fantastic. he's worked with that he's pitching our book to. And I'm very excited that we're doing this together, but I'm listening to you and going, 
yeah, I can be better. I can learn from this man. I mean, I'm learning from you on this show right now, which is a beautiful and wonderful thing. So let me ask you next question. So Larry, who is the ideal client for you, Larry Wilson and the Wilson Method? Hmm. I think uh, as you've established already in this interview, we seem to be doing a little mind reading going on back and forth between you and me, because I think you may have already answered that question. It's the person who sees that they have a problem in their life. You know, Nikki, there's some people who never want to acknowledge that they have a problem. They want to externalize all these things. Oh, it's bad luck. Nikki, I remember a girl I was dating, a gorgeous girl, really nice girl, but I'd only known her a short while, and she picked me up in her car one day to go someplace, and it was some fast, zippy little sports car. I said, oh, this is nice. She said, yeah, it's a very unlucky car. I said, really? How is it unlucky? She said, I've gotten so many speeding tickets in this car. And right at that, that moment, Nick thought, well, this relationship isn't going anywhere. <laughs> you think you got speeding tickets because the car's unlucky. You and I aren't really going to work out so well. You know, there's people who always want to externalize their problems. Those are not the good candidates. The good, perfect candidate for Wilson Method is someone who feels like you just said yourself. You are a good communicator, but you'd like to be better. That's how I feel. I'd like to be better at the things I do. Someone who wants to be better. And of course, in my training, I emphasize both written and verbal. Uh, sometimes I'll talk, Nikki, about um, three Ds. And it's just a mnemonic device to help you uh, if you get lost or you forget where you are as a touchstone. The three Ds are determine, define, deploy. I want you to be able to determine what your goal is in communicating. What is it you're trying to do? You know, so many people go into communications and don't do that. They just think, oh, I'll just shoot from the hip. It'll be fine. Well, that's like a Wild West gunfighter. And you know what happens to gunfighters. They die young. They do. We, I want you to think about what is your goal here. It, could, it doesn't mean it has to be complicated. Like you said before, maybe your goal is you want a date with someone. Maybe your goal is you want a raise. Maybe you want a job. It could be a million different things. But if you're clear about that and focused on that, just that alone will make your communication so much more effective. Then I want you to define the means of communication because they all use different techniques. Are you talking to someone? Is it on Zoom like you and I, or is it in person? Is it on the phone? Uh, is it written? Is it text? Is it email? Is it um, old school handwritten hard copy? You know, all these things require different techniques. And then the third D to deploy the tools that you learn in Wilson Method. And it makes it so much easier. You know, uh, sometimes people with that second D define, they think, oh, you just learn something and it it's one size fits all. Well, that's ridiculous. You know, we don't write texts the same way we would write a hard copy letter to someone. No. No. We just don't. So it's, if you really think about the person who's the ideal client, it's someone who... I'm sure there's a name for this type of personality, but no one's ever asked me that question before. It's someone who's serious about squeezing every drop of juice out of their life they can get. 
It's someone who wants to excel in every way they possibly can, but who isn't concerned really what other people think or other people's opinions, oh, this is good enough, or don't worry about that. They're constantly challenging themselves to do better. I really like that answer. And I would say I'm, I'm putting my hat on as someone who works with a lot of thought leaders in that I would say to you that you want to define it not just aspirationally, but also in terms of the pain that they want to leave because everybody has an aspiration, but everybody, people speak aspirationally, but they act out of a desire to get rid of pain, like a pain that's bugging them, an itch that they can't easily scratch, right? And Absolutely. So if I were like, if I were advising you on the messaging around this, I would say to you that you're looking for someone who, yes, has those aspirations, but you're also looking for someone who um, isn't making the sales they want to make, as an example. You're, you're looking for someone who is stalled out in their career and dumber people than them are getting ahead, like those MIT graduates. It's someone who... Um, it's someone who is a brilliant scientist and they're looking for investors in their ideas and they can't seem to get those investors to come forward. Somebody who's a good person, a good man, but he can't get the beautiful gal to go out with him. It's that sort of thing. You are, you are absolutely, this is a very, very smart point you're making here yeah. that people are aspirational, but they change based on the level of pain they're experiencing yeah yeah and uh, you know what you've given me well you've given me a tremendous uh, thing to focus on because you're right that the message here is what is it that is eating at you you know it's funny when you were just saying there about people who are dumber than you but are are, are leapfrogging over um, this, of course, makes me think of show business because it's almost axiomatic in show business. I would see these people who I would think, this person is so dumb, I don't know how they dress themselves in the morning. <laughs> I don't know how it's possible. And yet, they would be leapfrogging over all their competition. And it was not because they were smart. It was clearly not because they were smart. It yeah. was because of their communication. Yeah, brilliant point. So, you know, how do you go about attracting your ideal clients to you and your work? Well, <clears throat> I still feel like that's an ongoing organic process. And that's one of the reasons I'm enormously grateful for what you just said. Uh, you just gave me something <laughs> enormously valuable. Um, my... Pleasure. orientation unfortunately isn't always towards as clear as what you just said i frequently will show what i'm doing and think oh people who are aspirational will be drawn to this and sometimes they are but right now as we prepare to roll out this online training i need to focus on exactly what you just said exactly what you just said um and it's funny because i'm always quick to point out all the things i can't do i can't sing i can't paint there's a million things i can't do i'm not good with mathematics um i certainly am not good with marketing that's not my strength now i'm learning more about it as i begin to do some of these things but i can tell you how to communicate your message in a much more effective powerful way that mm -hmm. makes people want to invest in you both uh, professionally and personally but the ins and outs of sophisticated marketing are things that i'm still learning yeah, and so it's interesting to me. It's interesting to me to see um, ultimately 
if I had to guess, I think the most effective way for me to attract the best clients is to do what I'm doing right here with you, is to expose myself to the world. If people then come to my website, for example, and on the website, there's a lot of interesting information. Of course, it's free, but there's also some, uh, what I think maybe are the most effective ways of me finding my ideal clients. There are a lot of video testimonials. And when you see real people, you know, it's funny. Sometimes I see people who want to promote themselves using celebrities. Well, I spent the last 40 years of my life with celebrities. And it's very clear to me that you can pay them to say anything you want. I think everyone understands this, whether it's conscious or unconscious. You know, when they see some celebrity saying, these are the greatest breakfast muffins I've ever had. We know they were paid to say that. So I don't put that much weight in their testimonial. But when I see a real person who looks like a real person and sounds like a real person, is dressed like a real person, and they're saying, I'll, I'll give you an example, Nikki. I had a guy flying from Germany to train with me. And he really wanted to work on business stuff. And we did. And he found it enormously valuable for him. Um, to be able to approach uh, strangers, what might be called a cold calling situation, at where he would be comfortable and could connect with them and develop real relationships with them. And he felt this was enormously uh, helpful to him. And after two days of the boot camp, I offered to give him a ride back to the Los Angeles International Airport. On the way, we just, he mentioned a couple things about his wife and, you know, how he wished that she'd been there, but she wasn't really into this kind of training. And it just, that, that, that's all he said. A month later, I get a video from him. And I think it's on my website, someplace on there, where he says, a month after I got home, I realized I'm talking to my wife about things we've never talked about in 15 years of marriage. And he said, I didn't realize at first I was using all these Wilson method techniques. He said, because they're so natural, they just become part of your everyday life. Yes. And to me, that's an enormous success. I'm thrilled that his business is doing so much better and he's making so much money. But I guess um, I think that money is something we can always find. But real, authentic connections with the people we love, that's much harder to come by. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. You know, it's powerful because my next question to you was going to be, well, tell me about one of your success stories. And you just did that. So I thought that was just, <laughs> that was just absolutely well, fantastic. I'll, I'll tell you about one that I like in particular. There was a woman, um, uh, uh, I'll just say she's uh, of an age. So she's, I'm going to say she's older than 45. I don't know exactly how old she is. Um, named Patrice. And she came to me because she was up for a new job. And she had uh, been in one interview. And it was some serious stuff she was coming. Uh, it was a big uh, contract with this job and a great deal of money involved. And there were going to be a series of interviews. She made it past the first one. And she realized she needed a little bit more firepower. So we worked specifically on that. And I could tell working with her, I could tell how serious she was, how motivated she was. I said to her after a couple of days, I said, oh, you know, Patrice, you've got this job. And she said, oh, well, you know, you're just saying that. I said, no, no. I said, this is a fait accompli. I said, I'm totally confident you've got this job because I see how much progress you made. I see how you're applying the techniques that I'm teaching you. And you aren't concerned about why it works or you know, uh, whether this is what's the popular thing. You aren't concerned about that at all. 
all you're interested in are results and you see what's going on. And I think she thought I was just trying to make her feel more confident, but I wasn't. I really felt that way. She went through three more rounds of interviews and got the job. And, you know, it's funny when you say this stuff. When I see that, I really meant it felt like a fait accompli. I had a another woman uh, who I call Dr. D. Uh, her name is Danielle. She's out of uh, Tampa, Florida. And uh, she trained with me in boot camp because she was in a PhD program. And she realized that she was going to have to defend her dissertation in order to get that PhD. And she sent me a piece of video of her in her graduation gown with her mortarboard on. And she said, I would not have been able to do this without you, Larry Wilson. And now that's why I call her Dr. D because she great. did get her PhD, you know? So I think of those as success stories. That's fantastic. Uh, so Larry, as an emerging thought leader, with a desire to make a big dent in the world. What's the biggest challenge you're currently facing in terms of being able to scale and help more people? You mean, what's my biggest challenge? What's I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, think, I think my biggest challenge is um, getting myself out in the world. Hmm. Um, it's interesting because Technology is not really my strong suit. I have a team of people I work with and their skills fill in the things that I'm not good at. But I feel that that really is, you know, as, as I hear myself saying this, I wonder if I sound delusional. <laughs> I feel that there's so many people who are like you, Nikki, who mm want to be the best they can be. I think from listening to some of your episodes of your podcast, I think that's the kind of people you appeal to. I would be very surprised if it was different. And so I think there must be millions of people out there like that. Sure. And I see it as my job now to do whatever I can do in a uh, podcast interviews like we're doing in a uh, written uh maybe blog posts in magazine articles in every possible way that i can put stuff out that's available for free for anyone to learn about wilson method that's what i think is is the greatest challenge right now and I think it may be one of those things that's so big, it is attempting to be overwhelmed by it. And so I always think you just have to take it step by step. You just have to do a little bit every day. I think you should be a household name, brother. Um, <laughs> what you do is <laughs> From your lips good, to God's ear. As they say. So what frustrates you? the most about not being yet a household man? Well, um, it's an interesting question too. I I think what's most, I, I'm going to say something that sounds like I'm making a joke. <laughs> Maybe it is a joke. A lot of people feel about communication the same way they feel about sex. <laughs> Everybody thinks they're really good at it. And I'm not sure that they really are as good as they think they are. Um, <laughs> you know, have you ever met anybody, Nikki, who said, oh, I'm really bad at sex? No, everybody thinks oh, they're great oh, at it. Person. Not one person. And, right. In that same way, I think a lot of people, uh, it's a very special kind of person. Um, are you familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect? Very much so. In fact, I run an oh, organization oh. of men, and we talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect in one of our... Why am I not surprised, Nikki, <laughs> that you know that? I'll, I'll just reiterate, because Please. maybe someone listening isn't as familiar, but of course, I'm not surprised. 
uh, Dunning Kruger was not set out to, it's two scientists, one named Dunning, one named Kruger. They did not set out to discover this, but by accident, some tests they were doing, they found that the smarter you are, the more likely you're inclined to think you aren't as smart. You're more inclined to see all oh, the possibilities of other answers to questions than ones you came up with. You're more inclined to doubt yourself about certain. The dumber you are, the more inclined you are to think, oh yeah, I know everything. Every answer I have is, you know. And of course, what's paradoxical and yet wonderfully amusing about this is that sometimes that kind of delusional self-confidence can be very, very helpful for people. There are some people who, God knows, Nikki, I keep coming back. I've been in show business almost 40 years. I've seen some people who didn't have a fingernail's worth of talent who'd accomplish so much more than you would ever thought just because they thought they were the greatest ever. Now, when you hear me uh, use names, when I, I mention like um, Academy Award winner Timothy Hutton, who I worked with, or uh, Academy Award winner, multiple Academy Award winner uh, Carl Malden, it's because I had great relations with them and uh, learned so much from them and had such a fantastic experience with them. If I don't mention someone's name, it's because I don't want to embarrass anyone and I probably didn't have as good an experience. So when I tell you, I can think of a couple of people in particular who said things to me where they were completely candid, but they didn't realize how ridiculous what they were saying was. I was working with a guy I'd been hired because he had to do some kind of presentation someplace and some producer realized he's going to have a problem with this. And just in the course of like over lunch or something, talking with him, he was saying to me, God, I have to be really careful here, Nikki. Let's just say he was a television actor, all right? He was saying to me, he was a little bit annoyed that he didn't get offered any of the roles that Al Pacino got. And I looked at him like, I didn't know what to say. I thought, Al Pacino is like a thousand times better actor than you are. But in this guy's mind, he was just as good as Al Pacino. And later on, I thought about it, I thought, oh, that's how he's gotten as far as he has. He doesn't really know. That's why I think of Dunning-Kruger effect. You know, there's people in this world, like I said, who think their communication is fine. And if you ask me what was my greatest frustration, it's that. That sometimes I'll be, I've been hired by people, Nikki, who paid me a large sums of money. And I realized now, this has been a few years since this kind of uh, experience has taken place, but they didn't really want me to help them. What they wanted was for me to say, oh, my God, you're incredible. You can't do any better. You're the greatest. You're perfect. Don't change anything. And obviously, if I really felt that way, I would say it. But I would see right away oh my God, you have all these ways that you're getting in your own way. You're making things harder for yourself. Don't need to be this hard. You could do a couple simple things every day and suddenly feel like you were Superman. But they didn't really want to do that. They didn't want to do that. And so it, it, it it's funny because it also comes back to um, my ideal client. Obviously, this is not my ideal client. No. I want the person who's strong enough and self-aware enough to realize they may have limitations. Brilliant. And to say, I mean, that's why I told you I'm not good with technology. I'm not good with singing. I'm not, there's all kinds of things I can't do. And I realized them right away. And so the solution in my life has been I find someone who's really, really good at that to help me. That's brilliant. You know, I, I coach people and we, I run programs for people. 
and yet currently I'm working with um, six coaches in different areas of my life. Um, so uh, I have a main business coach I work with who coaches me on business and sales and so forth. And I have a lady who many, many years ago taught me the Silva method and how to visualize and manifest. She coaches me. I've got a fellow who coaches me on uh, relationships with my kids. I've got another fellow who's coaches me on relationships with my significant other. Um, I've mm -hmm. got a um, person who coaches me on how to present in public. She taught me many years ago. She's wonderful and amazing. And I've also got uh, a fellow who coaches me on health and fitness. I actually have a mm. seventh coach. I haven't seen her in a while. She coaches me on nutrition. So I'm a product of my own product in that world. So I want to show you something. This is a tool we, we use for, with people developed by a fellow named Matt Church. This is something I created, this Venn diagram here of how to identify your ideal client. And it's, you look at the clients you get the best results for. You get you look at the clients that you enjoy working the most with, and you look at the clients who pay you the best, and it's easy to transact with them. And your ideal client has got to be some combination of all three of these things. That's I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fantastic. Thank you. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, best results. Enjoy the most. Pays the best and is fun to transact with. Because there's some people that you get good results for and they're no fun to transact with. They're just horrible to transact <laughs> with. And there's some people that are easy to transact with, but they're not easy to work with, <laughs> you know, right, like right. those folks that you talked about. So it's good to find the sweet spot, you know, right in the middle, the bullseye. So, Larry, um, we're getting to the end of our time together, but I've got a, one or two more quick questions for you. So sure, imagine sure. it's a year from now, five years from now, you know, what would need to happen for you to have tears of joy in your eyes over the work you're doing, the impact you're having, and the legacy you're leaving? Well, my, my needs may be very modest uh, to have tears of joy. If I had... A thousand people. We'll start with a year from now, Nikki. If a year from now, I had a thousand people who used my online training of Wilson Method, I would have tears of joy. I would be over the moon about that. And part of that is because I would expect that it would... Um, it would be the uh, image, the metaphor of tossing a pebble into the pond. You know, the ripples reaching out from that. Because a lot of my clients come as referrals. Because someone who trained with me talks to someone else, says, you've really got to really meet this guy. You've really got to work with this guy. And so I would think if there were a thousand people who trained with me, it would mean there was going to be a quantum explosion from those thousand people. And five years from now, I would be, we're just blue skying, I guess. If I had 10,000 people I had trained five years from now, I would, it would so exceed my expectations. I would be so gratified. Yeah. It would be, I mean, I can imagine certain crazy things I would have to do. I would have to build my infrastructure, my team would have to expand exponentially, you know? It, and I assume when that starts to happen, that I could do all kinds of exciting things I haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Larry, it's been a lot of fun having you on the show. How do people find out about your work, go 
sign up for a, a session with you? Or how does this all work? Where, what's the website? Where do they well, go? Of course, it's very simple. Uh, they, I have a podcast, of course, uh, called How to Talk to Humans. And uh, this is available wherever you find your podcasts. And it's a weekly podcast that I discuss a lot of the, some of the things that you and I touched on here. I go into much greater depth on, but people who are serious about taking their lives to a higher level, um, probably would be very interested in my website, which is the Wilson method.com. But I told you before, when you said you were going to make this a different thing and go out to your regular uh, thought leaders, I thought, okay, two can play at this game. <laughs> if Nikki's going to do that, here's what I'm... Anyone listening to this podcast who's interested in training with me online, if you go to thewilsonmethod.com slash Nikki, N-I-C-K-Y. I'm going to have my IT people put up a special page that will be a massive 50% discount or more um, just because of what we're talking about here, Nikki. Uh, that Venn diagram you just showed me is so fantastic. Best results, best experience, best uh, revenue. And I, I, that's who I want to work with. So obviously the people listening to your show are the right kind of people. If they like you and what you're espousing, those are the people I would like to have. So I'll put that up. I'm going to leave that up. If you listen to this podcast in the year 2085, it will still have that special page awesome. for your people, Nikki, the Wilson method.com slash Nikki. And very generous, Larry. Thank you so much. Well, and, and I'll tell you this also that uh, I'm sure on that page, there's something about the podcast. I'm sure there's something about how to contact me directly. If people from your podcast, have any questions if they if they reach out to you nikki you can always forward them to me if they reach out to me through the website i read every single one now you know you and i are talking about five years from now having ten thousand people i've trained that may be harder for me to read every single one yeah, at that 000. point sure but I guarantee you I'll have someone whose job it is to bring me all the interesting pertinent question because it's the most interesting to me. Yeah. You know? Larry, well, it's been a lot of fun having this interview with you. Uh, you know, you're, uh, you're a brilliant man. Uh, level of communication that you have is genius level. And that's why it was a real honor to have this conversation with you. I had fantastic experience. Any time, I'd love to. It just, uh, this is my idea of a good time. Agreed, 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 agreed. And that wraps up another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. To find out more about today's amazing guest, the one and only Larry Wilson, go to the show notes at thethoughtleaderrevolution.com. Make sure you go to the wilsonmethod.com forward slash Nikki. Check out his course. Take advantage of the great offer that he's given you. God bless you, listener, for being one of the champions for freedom, for free expression, and for free enterprise. And God bless you for wanting to be a better version of yourself. And um, if you like what you heard today, give us a like, give us a rating, give us a review, and share this episode with someone else who needs to hear it. Until next time, goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.